welcome back, everybody. It's time now to take your questions for our guest. We've gotten some really great ones all week long, so we're going to get right to them. And our first question comes to us from Deb. She says, from your perspective, for both of you, has BP paid fairly? John, you want to start off? Um, let me tell you, I, I'm not directly involved. I'm more tangentially involved, um, but I've studied it enough to know that there are many questions. There are more questions than answers. That's mm -hmm. one reason I'm delighted to have Val here because he's much more directly involved. So I've turned it over to Val. What's your take on Sean, that? Sean, I'd say unequivocally no. And if you ask the question as why the United States government of the states of Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida have all objected to the settlement, mm -hmm. they are unequivocally of the opinion that no BP has not paid enough. And the extent of the damage caused by the largest oil spill in the history of the United States has not yet been quantified. Right. And that a serious problem with the settlement is that it places a limit or a cap, if you will, mm -hmm. on the amount of damages that BP would be held responsible for. And that is against the law. It is contrary to the Oil Pollution Act mm -hmm. passed by Congress after the Exxon Valdez spill to make sure that there was unlimited liability for those who pollute our environment by the discharge of petroleum products. Well, let me follow up on that um, and play devil's advocate here. On, on the one hand, I, I heard you say that it's so generous and you don't have to prove causation mm -hmm. and uh, you don't, all you have to do is show how much money you're out individually or as a business, but in the next answer, it's so unfair reconcile those two comments. That's the dichotomy that's going on here, John. And again, that's what, something that makes this settlement so unique in American history. On the one hand, you have a class of folks that have arguable claims. They may or may not ever prevail if they brought their claim in a court of law, who pursuant to this settlement are getting paid without having to prove that their damages were caused by the oil spill. On the other hand, you have folks who are arguably the most impacted that being the state of Louisiana, with mm -hmm. all of its natural resources, the seafood industry, right? right? Who are, they would have the easiest claims to make for damages that they sustained, and their damages are being capped. Their damages are being limited. Not necessarily all of them pursuant to this settlement, because the state of Louisiana still has its natural resource damage case separate and apart from this settlement. But nonetheless, the state has objected and objected vehemently, saying that some of the findings of fact that the court could make in approving this settlement may negatively impact the state's claim. Lawyers like Stuart Smith, who have uh, represented hundreds, if not thousands, of commercial fishermen, he has filed objections to the, the law, to proposed settlement, saying, again, you're putting caps, it, there's arbitrary lines drawn in the sand. Mm -hmm. This claimant gets X number of dollars and this one gets Y number of dollars. Why? It's based upon one of the points that Mr. Smith makes is it's based upon visible oil. Well, what about the tens of millions of gallons of oil that because of the use of dispersants weren't visible, right, but, but were nonetheless there. Yeah. are there yeah. and impacted, I think by last estimates, there's still 150 to 160 million gallons of oil that is yet to be recovered. Well, what happened to it? So there's some very positive, generous parts that we can say hallelujah about, but then there's some other things that are arbitrary and unfair just uh, that you can easily point to, too. Is that the uh, short answer? And that's the short answer, and I think the word to the wise is, if you're in the seafood industry, if mm -hmm. you're a commercial fisherman, you really need to think long and hard as to whether or not you want to participate in this settlement or not. Okay. If you're a hairdresser or a janitor or someone like that, you probably do because you're going to get compensated and it's going to be easy for you to do so. Yeah, but for those in the seafood industry, you don't know what the long-term uh, effects are there. So and you're really putting yourself in a box. You're absolutely right, Sean, and doing. that's exactly what the Attorney General said in his objection to the settlement. We don't know yet. It's too early to quantify the loss. Right. Don't make those in the commercial fishing industry make a decision before they have all of the information. Okay, let's get to Terrence's question. He says, I see these commercials on TV that say, um, have you taken this drug? Or some of those commercials might uh, be in reference to the BP oil spill. And he says, um, if so, you might be part of a class action lawsuit. How do you feel about those 
those commercials are they legitimate? We've all seen those commercials. Let me, let me jump in because generally uh, my attitude is these commercials, they seem to have taken over the television set. I, every time I'm up early in the morning, I'm making my coffee. It seems like every other commercial is some new class action. Right. I don't like them because it seems like it's a law firm I've never heard of, somebody from out of state. Or mm -hmm. now I've heard of them because it's the same law firm, every other commercial, out of state. Uh, they don't know about Louisiana law and Louisiana uh, and the rights for Louisiana citizens. And I think they're giving lawyers a bad name. It seems like they're hawking some lawsuit every every other day, some new right. lawsuit. I'm in favor of lawsuits that protect consumers against dangerous products, but I think Louisiana lawyers are in a better position to protect Louisiana citizens. Val? I'd agree with that 100%. In my experience, Sean, of the vast majority of the national law firms that are advertising are really nothing other than clearing houses. They take in a huge number of cases and they refer those out to the lawyers who actually are handling the litigation. You really don't need to do that. You mm -hmm. can really find, if going on the internet is probably the easiest way, find lawyers who are actually involved in the litigation personally themselves, those are the folks that you want to represent you, not some national clearing house that is really in it just for the money. Okay, all right, let's go to Ava's question. This comes to us via email. She says, is anything about the deep water oil drilling going to change as a result of the deep water horizon spill? I think that's the, the, if you had to look for something good to come out of the Deepwater Horizons oil spill, the answer to that is unequivocally yes. Mm -hmm. If you look at the response of the industry, they certainly have reacted to all of the negative publicity associated with deep water drilling. They certainly, the United States government and the states actually have mandated <coughs> stricter guidelines uh, stricter safety measures, so I think the answer is yes. Right, no, lots, of, lots of new regulations in place yes. as a result of that. And I'll just add to that, that you know, as much as lawyers, trial lawyers are the punching bags of so many people and their <laughs> jokes and everything, and I like a good lawyer joke, these lawsuits are one of the main things, more than anything else, more than legislation, more than you know, moral boardrooms, that keep companies honest. And it's the lawsuits that force companies to change their ways mm -hmm. and be safer because okay. they don't want to be sued. That's right. Okay, now this is a big question. We don't have that much time, so we're going to have to really try to keep it brief. But it's, uh, this question comes to us from Michael. He says, what is the Restore Act? And will it benefit people in the Gulf South region? That Restore Act is huge for all of the states. Yes, uh, the Restore Act was passed by Congress yes. to make sure that 80 percent of the money in fines that BP is going to be ordered to pay goes to those coastal states that have suffered wetlands losses, et cetera. Louisiana tending to be one of the, the states, or will be one of the states to benefit from the Restore Act. Actually, it's very interesting, though, because there's negotiations going on right now between the Department of Justice and BP as to whether or not those fines, upwards of $20 billion, are actually going to be paid pursuant to the Clean Water Act mm -hmm. that would make sure that, that it, it qualifies for Restoration Act funds or is going to be paid through the National Resource Damage Act that's actually tax deductible, number one, and number two, that would not qualify under the Restore Act for the states getting 80% of those funds. So it's actually very interesting to see what's going to happen in those negotiations and pay attention to how the money is paid under Clean Water Act, which is good for Louisiana, or under the National Resource Damage Act, which is potentially very bad for That's Louisiana. Right, and if you're involved in this case, in the BP case, pay close attention. November 1st is a very important date for folks. They've got to watch that. That's an important deadline that's uh, coming up. But Val, we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for being on the program. That does it for our show this week. Thank you for all of your questions, and be sure to join John and us next week as we delve into expungements with Paul Bonin. He's the former traffic court judge and current judge on the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Thanks to everybody watching at home and sending in their questions. Remember to check out the website, johnrevinpoa.com, and we'll see you next time.